This session is brought to you by Zurich Life and Investments. These guys are one of the last true independent life insurers going around and they're Swiss, so you know their stuff is solid. These guys really understand and believe in the value of advice, which is why they invest in programs like this one and partner with groups like XY Advisor to help drive the positive evolution of financial advice in Australia. Their team are just really good people as well. So if you haven't already connected with them to learn more, check out their website or speak to your business development contact. This session is also brought to you by Sun Super. They're one of the fastest growing profit for members or industry funds in Australia. They were the very first of these funds to partner with advisors and they've got functionality where you can actually link to your client Sun Super accounts and charge advice fees through the fund as well as a number of uh, tech innovations to make it easier for you to work with your clients. They've got great investments, they're really, really cheap and their team are just generally legends. So if you haven't already connected with Sun Super, give them a shout because they're doing some really cool stuff. FinCon last year? Yes. What did you think? Um, I loved FinCon. That was my second time going. So obviously I, I liked it. I went back for round two. And definitely a lot of stuff that I'm seeing, you know, the benefit of now in my business has come from FinCon. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I just, I thought it was, it's fun. What was the what was the biggest takeaway for you? Like, what was the if there was you had to pick one thing? So the first year, the biggest takeaway would be really building that personal brand, and so that's why I've been concentrating on the Adele Martin Money Mentor brand, and that came off the back of of the first FinCon. Uh, the second one uh, recently was definitely be able to use webinars and using that as a way to be able to scale and, and to you know reach and help more people. Mm-hmm. So for the listeners out there. Um, Ben and Adele are like the female and male versions of each other. They're like the ver- ver- voracious consumers of um, guidance and uh, best practice in the financial advice world. And as opposed to half the people that consume all this cool stuff, they go out and implement the fuck out of everything. And um, and that's why they've got really awesome businesses. So like they've got different styles, but like shit. The stuff Adele does. She like she goes. She'll listen to one session in FinCon, and she's like, "I'm doing that." And like, she gets back, and a week in, she's like, doing a yeah. Facebook group," <laughs> and <laughs> she just doesn't fuck around. Like, yeah, it's no, awesome. I am, and I suppose that's one. Um, when I first started my business, definitely had distractions, and you know, it was a bit all over the place. Um, but yeah, since since I started with a, a business mentor and a, a mastermind group, that's when I became laser focused and really learned how to plan my business. So, just to clarify that. The magic is not just the XY Advisor Mastermind group no. that you're running. Yeah. <laughs> you, you channel that through to the other people, but you've got your own mastermind yeah, group. Yeah, I'm part of a um, program called K2 Elite. So mm. my mentor is a guy called Curran Ray. I'm not sure if some of um, you guys listening might know the, him. Um, he pops all, up on my Facebook. Yeah, he's all over Facebook. He's quite an attractive fellow. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's where I really learned how to really plan and to plan well and to make sure you're not, you know, don't get distracted by those shiny objects. So with my team, we plan you know, every quarter – um, you know, we, we are looking at the plan every single week, every single day. We are making sure we're working, you know, on the business, not just in the business. So how do you do that? How Practically, like, what is, what is the planning look so like? So practically, we've got um, a purpose, a mission and values, and that's what we're always referring back to. I then plan for the next 12 months. So we come up with what are the, some of the things we want to be able to achieve over the next 12 months, and then we break that down to, okay, what's the most important things we can focus on this quarter? And then every week in our, in our you know, in a huddle we have a, a, once a week, we go, right, who's working on what this week? So it's like a big goal that is for the quarter that we then break down. Down. Mm-hmm. And so as an example, let's say we're, you know, wanting to do some webinars, what are the steps involved in that? And so each week we're saying, okay, well, we need to get you know, this part done, who's doing that in the team. And so then on a daily basis, we have our top three. So what are our top three things from yesterday? What are our top three things from today? And we do that every day. And then, you know, at the end of the next week, we, we see how we went with it. But I make the distinction with the team between working on the business and in the business. And they've got stuff that they have to do that's just in the business, but we all have to be making sure we're working on the business as well. Mm-hmm. How do you track it? So I use Evernote. So I, I like Evernote because everyone can see it. it's on our phone. But yeah, Evernote, the whole team's involved in it and you know they, they then feel part of the planning process. It's also amazing when new team members come on board because they can plug straight in, you know, straight what their role is going to be and they know where the business is heading and they want to feel part of something. 
Yeah. Something that seems to keep coming up are these ninety day runways. Uh, mm. We had a mm. we had Stuart Bell in earlier uh, today, and he was talking about that the, his clients go through this ninety day program, and you know once once you set your ninety day goal post, then you kind of break that down into. He was talking monthly, monthly check-ins, but even sort of weekly and breaking it down to daily. The overarching philosophy is the 90-day thing to, to pick up productivity. Yeah, I think if you've got, I mean, it's just like financial planning. If you've got a goal, you've got something to focus on, it's much easier. You break that down into little chunks rather than, you know, you're going to be debt-free, you know, in 5,000 years. You break that down into this is how much we need to achieve this quarter, this year. It makes it a lot easier, you know, for financial planning. And so we just apply that same logic to business. Mm. Mm. Speak. One of the th- I'm, I'm keen to dive into something that you said before we started, which is uh, advice you would give, kind of give yourself before you started, or for someone that's starting out in financial advice. Yeah. So if I was um, new and if I could go back in time and tell myself this when I first started, which was in 2001, um, I would tell myself and I tell other young advisors to, to start their own personal brand. So I think that's just so important, and it's something that I've saw you know done really really well in America, and we're not we're not very good at doing it here. Um, I think. You know, because of that tall poppy syndrome, we don't want to be seen as, you know, leaping up and being the one that's, you know, sort of showing off. But people don't resonate with um, a brand. They resonate with a person. And so you're going to have a much greater connection if you are that person. So, yeah, for me, and, and, and also over time, you know, I've changed different businesses. I used, when I first started, I started, you know, working with retirees and I was a partner in a retiree practice, which I then exited. And then I started my own business and then we rebranded and then I merged again with another business partner and then we exited. So I've had all these changes, but my name has remained the same. And so it would have been a lot easier, I think, in terms of, you know, uh, media, PR, people knowing me, if I would have just have built that personal brand from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And so what does that mean yeah, practically? Yeah. So I, I would, if I was another advisor, obviously you have to check with your dealer group and your, your um, owner, but if I was a young advisor starting out, I would start my own, you know, whatever your name is, money expert, as a Facebook page as a very beginning and just start, you know, regular posting. I would also start, you know, a Facebook group, and we can talk about that later, a massive fan of Facebook groups, but I would start that nurturing process and start seeing yourself as an authority. Definitely a Facebook page, um, you know, your LinkedIn profile, start seeing yourself as that authority as an expert you could even get you know done very you know cheaply a a website that could have you know buy you you buy the you know your domain name um have a you know that one page website so if the media or someone's coming to you they've got that one page reference point that you can go to Mm. yeah great tips and it's are you you kind of limiting your personal brand to you at work no, for me, I have all sorts of fun of mine. So, and that's probably the other thing that I um, do in social is I don't really have a distinction between business and personal. People pretty much see everything. So, and for me, it's all about being authentic. I don't want to be someone that that's fake on there. So, you know, people will see me inside the Facebook group or on the page. You know, do, doing stuff that other people would see is you know silly um, and, and not professional. But for me, I, I want that authenticity. And I think you know, people that are doing it well, people like Gary V, who's developed a very good personal brand, he's done that because he's authentic. And so. So, yeah, for me, there is no real – most of my clients I'm friends with on Facebook. Most of them, I get more Facebook messages now than when I do emails. So we're having to, you know, address that by having um, my VA come in and actually, you know, um, check my Facebook messages uh, as opposed to my emails. So for <laughs> me, um, I just have those, you know, two that are, are very blurred. And so, th- th- yeah, there is no difference for me. It's I, almost – it's just easier being it's, – it's harder if you're trying to maintain something that you're not, yeah. isn't it? So you just go let you, the patty out. You know, is that what you're saying? So just yeah. let patty. That's what I was going to say. That's the risk, right? Clearly, this works quite well for <laughs> works you. Works really but what well if you're for like Adele. Adrian Patty, uh, like with some of his Facebook posts. Sweet Jesus, I don't know if you. Uh, I don't really post anymore. Facebook that. has stopped me being out of the post. Man, you've been blacklisted. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely banned from the XY advisor post. That's right. <laughs> so tell us about your Facebook group. So I have the Facebook group, The Saving Squad. Uh, we've just hit a thousand members, which is very exciting. Uh, it's something that I first started, you know, uh, probably uh, two years ago and has just been slowly building. I had no idea what I was going to do with it at the time. I just knew that I wanted to be able to connect with more people. And I knew that with inside a group, I knew that you had that more connection. It was more intimate. People would ask more questions. And yes, yeah, we definitely have found that inside the group. And it's just sort of evolved over time. So over time, we've, we've expanded that group and what we do in it. So we do things like last night, we had the financial 
book club. So that's something we've started. And for me, it's really, you know, one of my big passions, one of my big values is learning. So to have, you know, uh, other people taking that up and reading the book and want to know what's coming next, um, you know, is really exciting to have that take up inside the, you know, um, the Facebook group for that. So we would get, a, you know, usually a couple hundred people that would watch that video on, on the um, financial book club each week, which is great. So you'll give a summary of the book you read? And- yeah, so I do it chap- I do it a couple of chapters at a time. Um, okay. Yeah, just because I think it keeps me in front, something regular. And that's the thing with Facebook. It has to be something regular and something you do consistently. So every week we go into a couple of uh, chapters. And so we're currently reading um, I'm a Badass at Making Money. So we've, we've read a variety of ones last year. Um, but we have all sorts of things. We have Todd Ask Tuesday, which which is a, a post that we do every week. So it's more than just movie vouchers? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. There's been some good tips, some stuff that I've actually learned. Like um, it's been amazing what people share. And so starting to see them, which I'm loving now, the community at the stage where they're supporting each other, they're asking questions and they're supporting each other, which is what awesome. you want. Mm. And so well, I've got an awesome tip for Tight Ass Tuesday. We've, yeah. I've got a I've got a mate that like we go out for dinner with a few of the guys every now and again. And there's this one guy last couple of times he's booked in and organized it. And he gets these vouchers from Dimmy that are fifty percent off. Ah, fifty percent off! Like it's really annoying him being a tight ass. Like the <laughs> not other ninety percent of his life, <laughs> like when, especially when you're waiting for a round and it never comes. Yeah. But hey, when it's fifty percent off a meal, you're yeah. just sitting there going, "I don't care if it's no good." That's fifty yeah. percent. That's <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's a good one for next week. Yeah, I'll put that in there. <laughs> so uh, keen, keen to learn, Adele. So thousand members, are awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, your advisor, you just start out. You create the Facebook page, Facebook group. You start blogging and talking stories, and you know things that you're up to as an advisor. How do you get momentum of people getting into the group? So that's a good question. So I have done a lot of speaking events. So and when I'm at the speaking events, like last week I spoke at She Business. That's I've got a um, keynote that I do called How Frenemies and Failures Lead to Fantastic Opportunities. There's also another version, How Fuck Offs and Fuckwits Lead to Fantastic Opportunities, just depending on the audience. Yeah. And then there's our yeah, joint presentation that we do around yeah, social media. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so just depending on the audience, I have a bit of fun with that. But getting that keynote in front of um, some bigger women's events is great for them to opt in. So I've done that, you know, several times times now that presentation definitely at speaking events uh definitely in the media so pr is something that i've been able to leverage um Mm. you know really well so every time you know this week um you know was it this week i was in the abc and i I got several people join the 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 facebook group in the back of that so i'm like what were you doing at the abc i said not on the i was on the um i was on an article that they released and they were they were talking about their new podcast that they've got so had several people off the back of that but then i had all these people from melbourne and i couldn't figure out what had happened but i had triple m radio I did an interview with them before Christmas and I released them all in the new year. So I had all these people from Melbourne and I thought, that's really weird, what's happening? And then I realised that the radio stuff had gone live. Do you so, have a full-time publicist for yeah, this stuff Well, now? that's probably the next stage that um, I wow. would like to get to. Um, but, yeah, so definitely the PR stuff. And, and for some of the advisors listening, you know, how do you start in that PR space? What do you do? Firstly, having that personal brand would help. Uh, secondly is there's a website called Source Bottle. Yeah, it's um, fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, so that's a great to get your foot in the door. And I would say with Source Bottle, or how you sort of get, and this is where I first started, is treat it like a, a, a resume. Like make mm. sure you've got your, you know, your um, prof- your speaker page done, or your um, that, that you know tells you all yourself about you. Make that professional, and then you know, so when they attach it, they think, wow, this person's you know is authority. The authority. Yeah. So and that's how I've been published. You know, in, in <coughs> Women's Day, the Australian Financial Review, you know, Sydney Morning Herald, all those things was off the back of starting at Source Bottle. Mm. And then one of the other tips I'd say to make sure you're doing is you are really thankful of that journey. Journalist. Journalists yeah. are extremely, extremely time poor. Uh, they are under all sorts of pressures with, with deadlines. And, you know, um, so you want to make sure that you are getting it back to them in a really timely manner and that you're also mm. really appreciative. If you're really appreciative, really thankful, and, you know, for them to give you that opportunity, they then will support you. And so even if I can't help them, I'll find another advisor that is perfect for them in that space. Mm. So I've referred, you know, if it's for a retiree article, I will find another financial advisor that's in that space and put them in contact with them. So tax question that I don't know, I'll find someone else that can help them. So I always make sure, and I think that's how I've been able to, you know, um, even if I can't help, find someone that can help, and that's how I've been able to have the exposure that I have, which has then helped to, to feed the Facebook group. Yeah, the um, the phone conversations when they're doing a phone interview can be interesting sometimes. So you're warming up, you're getting into it, and then, then they're like, um, Adrian, that's enough. Thank you. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Um, but I've got heaps more to say. Oh, no, no, we got, we're going to... <laughs> so, so with, you know, I think Aussies don't really talk about money too much and, and there's that, 
a bit of a stigma around it or barrier for people doing it. How have you found you? Obviously, you you built the group and uh, you know building up sort of the audience there. But what did you have to? What did you have to do at the start, or how did you find it? They, were they just you just found the right people and they were open to sharing, or yeah, what have th- you done to encourage that? Um, I think people do want to learn about money. I think particularly people in their twenties, thirties, and forties who I work with, they see maybe their parents still working or now having to live off the age pension, and they don't want to be that person. So they mm. want to do something, but they don't know what. Um, and also, they're very you know. To be honest, distrustful of financial advisors. Mm. Every second day we're in the media for something, you know, um, and now a Royal Commission. And so, you know, our name is not, you know, the best out there. There's a lot of distrust. Uh, They think they're just going to sell me something, they're going to take a commission. And so that Facebook group has really helped me to build up that trust. Slowly by slowly, they know I'm a real person. They know I'm here there to help and support. And so I think, you know, there's something called the mere exposure effect where someone has to see you, you know, eight or plus times before they actually start to, you know, know, like and trust you. That Facebook group is one extra way I can get in front of them, one mm-hmm. extra way they can see me as a real person, and so and, and then know that I can help. Um, but like last night in the in the Facebook group, we had that discussion about money. So the book that we're reading, you know, I'm a badass at making money, talks about that how people actually um, don't like to be rich. They perceive rich as a bad thing. So we actually have a lot of conversations in there around that. And last night, you know, when we we brought up, you know, being rich, what does that mean? And people actually said they hate money, they hate the word rich, they see it as something that's, um, you know, evil or a bad thing. And so we actually last night, you know, helped to unravel some of those, you know, stories that people had running, um, you know, saying that you don't care about money, saying that you hate money. And, um, yeah, so definitely there were some, some, some blocks and some barriers around money and people's mindset of money. Is this an Australian mentality? I think, I think it is large in Australian mentality. I think it's <laughs> definitely, you know, you see it worldwide, but I think in, in particular in Australia, if someone's being successful, someone's got money, must be doing something illegal or, you know, mm. there's there's always some sort of underlying story. And, um, you know, last night was great to be able to have that conversation with someone and she said, you know, I don't care about money. And I said, well, if you had a best friend and you told them every day you didn't care about them, what did you think would eventually would happen? Mm. And, she, and she goes, I hadn't thought of it like that. And so then we gave everyone in the group an activity they could do so they could, you know, start to look at ways they could appreciate money. So we made them come up with a list of 10 reasons why money was a good thing and really have better appreciation of money. So yeah, that's the sort of stuff that we're doing inside the group to really break down, you know, people saying money is a bad thing. And how's the journey from this engagement and experience? When, how, where's the elevation point into, like, business for yeah. full so service how to, advice? how to commercialise it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's got to make sure it's commercial. So, to start with, I was making sure I just wanted to build a group. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And I was definitely running, you know, events for off the back of that and inviting them along. And t- paying tickets? For- um, sometimes, sometimes not. So, yeah. sometimes I do like 20, 30 bucks and sometimes not. I've tested it. Um, I, at the moment, I'm doing free events because I think – it gets them in and if I've got a good conversion anyway. Um, I'm starting to do a VIP upsell. So I did this this weekend where it's a free event, but we have a VIP upsell. So, you know, front row gets, um, you know, a drink, they get, you know, a workbook, you know, whatever. Sure. So the VIP tickets are $47. So we're testing that to see how that works as well. Um, but, yeah, so coming back to how am I commercialising it. So we did events, live events, and they worked. So we would have, you know, quite a big, you know, um, good people turn up. And we'd have good conversion off the back. But what I was finding was, um, you know, and we were expanding. And so that's when I, I merged with, um, you know, my um, now ex-business partner because I was expanding, implementing some of these marketing strategies, but I couldn't do the work that was coming off the back of it. I thought that a partnership was the only way for me to scale and grow. Um, I have then since realised that there was other ways I can scale an advice business without needing to merge. And so, um, yeah, to be to be perfectly honest, that was qu- quite a difficult time post-merger um, because I had no team, because I'd let them go when we merged. I had no office because um, where I was, the guy got um, went to volunteering illustration, so I had to find a new office, and my laptop got stolen all within a week. Right. So oh, nice. I was like, right, something has to change. I now don't have – I want to help people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, but now I don't have – an office and I don't have a laptop and I don't have a team. So how am I going to be able to help and scale, uh, help these people and scale a business without me having to do all the work? And so that's when I was, you know, introduced to, you know, Teachable and to having, uh, building an online course. And so um, that journey started pretty solidly 
probably September, October last year. Mm-hmm. Um, we've launched. We now have, you know, 20 people. So we haven't we haven't released it to the public because we've just been um, testing it. We've got 20 paid people that have gone to the program at 500 uh, US each and they are making their way through the program and, you know, having great results off the back of it. How long does the program go for? So they get access to it for 12 months, but mm-hmm. they can do it at whatever pace they like. Okay. So... Um, yeah, so that is how I've been able to commercialise it a bit. We are just about to also do some more live. So we just started webinars as well. So we've been selling those. We've had um, two webinars, which we've sold off the back of those. And now this weekend, we've got um, two live events. Um, I think we've got 150, 160 people between the two live events. And that's when we're also going to promote um, the um, my Money Buddy program, which yeah. is to help them, you know, if they're having trouble saving, not sure where the money goes, here's a really great way that you can save. I'm curious. So there's no traditional full service financial there advice. There is. So we've just, we've just, um, we've been looking at how can we automate that? How can we scale that? And we, there is. So we now have, I'm not doing, I've just decided this year that I'm not doing more peaceful advice. So if someone wants to come and do super insurance, that's not the fit. That's not who I want to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way I've positioned it to clients is it's sort of like going to the doctor and you've got a sore throat, but you've got a bleeding leg, but the doctor only treats your sore throat. And I don't want to be, and that's just me personally, I don't want to just do little bits of advice. So the new program, um, the My Money Independence program, is we work on, you know, it's a 12-month program, significant investment, but we work on the four pillars of financial planning. So we look work on all the areas. Um, so, yeah, that definitely is something that we've what been What sort able- of charging are you? Um, so I'm doing 10K for the first year. Boom. Yeah. So, and it seems to be getting working, so... Um, oh, if you've been doing everything else, <laughs> leading, <laughs> that's the final step and everyone's yeah. been having a great time on the way. Yeah, and so now I'm saving money, what do I do with it? And, you know, for some people it is a significant investment, but, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, we're setting yourself up for life and, you know, what's involved that, and we go through it... Um, that they don't have an issue with it. And I would say just on that, that's probably one area, and I go off topic, I do talk, just go off topic. Totally okay. Um, one of the areas that I'd see, particularly young advisors coming through, and I see this in the mastermind, in, in the mastermind, um, the XY mastermind, the sales skills are not there. Um, like they're mm. really lacking. And you could be the most technical advisor, but unless mm. you've got sales skills, you are never, ever going to be able to help anyone. And so um, I've invested a lot in sales skills. Uh, and, and so I can, um, n- not that I need to convince someone, but if I don't get them to take action, they're going to be worse off. So I actually see it as serving them. How can I best serve these people? And so I've really refined my sales process so mm. that we can have, you know, because some people, times people think they've got a marketing problem. Mm. It's actually not a marketing problem. It's actually a sales problem. And so, yeah, we've now got the process in place, um, you know, very defined sales process. You're referring, like, I guess a lot of people are looking at all this stuff that's going on and like, shit, how does she do that? Like, and you, there's a lot of we's that you're referring to. Yeah. How do you resource? Where do you get your team from? How can people, yeah, how, how do you go about that? Yeah, so... Um, to start with, it was just me, and then I've been able to expand. I, I've toyed with offshore, so um, we use some offshore st- um, places. So I actually use a company called Automation Agency. They do a lot of our graphic design work, build some of our simple, you know, um, campaigns and marketing campaigns, landing pages and stuff like that. Great price point, you know, three or four hundred dollars a month, so really good. Um, and then in terms of our actual team, one of the things that I've been able to do is make it virtual. So um, virtual is great because it means that I can, you know, employ really smart people all around the country. And some of them are not, not necessarily full time; some of them just want part time work. And that virtual means that I can attract. I was just saying um, before, um, I've got you know a new executive assistant on Alsa who is you know ex Navy. She you know did a communications degree, worked in the Navy, worked at Ernst and Young, Macquarie Bank. Um, you know, phenomenal in her job, but now has kids and wants to be able to work from home and wanted some you know flexibility. So she actually you know lives in Melbourne. Um, my other advisor that I've got on, she's in Townsville. Both have kids and want to be able to have flexibility. Both are super smart and. So so we've been able to, you know, work with people all around Australia that are super smart um, because I know not everyone smart lives in Newcastle. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> not everyone. Yeah. So that's how we've been able to scale is make it virtual. So I don't have to have a big office. I don't have massive overheads. Uh, and so that's been able to, you know, help us um, scale it. Uh, on top of that, you know, they're, they're working part time. They're not necessarily working full time. So mm. that helps keep costs down as well. How do you, how do you find them? 
how do I find them? So I just did a seek ad. So I just used a seek ad. I also, you know, usually if I've got some contacts and I know people, I'll, I'll, I'll email out, you know, to them. Do you know anyone? You know, you've got so many industry contacts now that, that they often know someone. And, um, yeah, so seek has been the, the best thing. What you will do, though, is get a lot of ads, a lot of people that apply because a virtual job when you're a female, when you work from home, you know, that sort of That's role, the dream, right? Yeah, doesn't come along, you know, that often. And so, yeah, I actually had... Um, Asa tried to get they tried to poach it back um, because of the flexibility that we had and offered and that could go to the school kids thing and you know I'm not tied to hours I, I don't want it to, if you have to go at mm. one o'clock because it's your kids thing I don't care um, I'm so we are really outcome based so we offer you know full flexibility like that as well so if they've got school stuff on they need to go to a doctor's appointment or, or whatever mm-hmm. I want them to have that full flexibility to be able to do that and so because of I think because of that um, and because of what we're working towards you know wanting to help you know the average Josie, we've got very great a great team a great culture both of them go you know above and beyond to be able to help support clients uh, i've had numerous clients come back and tell me how happy they are with the team and i think that's because we've given them the, the you know the great flexibility and they've just really appreciated it and they're enjoying what they're doing yeah they're, mm. they're loving what they're doing loving the varied role you know we're a small business so they, they get to do some social media stuff they get to do you know you know a variety of stuff not just the you know um, boring admin side of it well, if anyone out there thinks this sounds like a great gig, <laughs> just uh, send your CV through yeah, to yeah. Adele. Please do. And, and, and she sounds Ever like she's growing at a rapid pace. The, the Evernote's the source of truth to track all this stuff. Correct. So Evernote is where we do our, our, da- our huddle, so our daily huddle. So we have a bigger huddle at the start of the week and then we we're looking at the bigger plan and then each day we're looking at the diary, who's coming in, so looking at more of the in-the-business stuff plus also how we're going with the on-the-business stuff. And who's coming in isn't who's coming in. No, no, Zoom is virtual. <laughs> who's logging in. That's right. So we use virtual. We use Zoom for the large majority of our meetings. Cool. I do have um, a, a couple of clients we do see face-to-face but the large majority we see via Zoom which you know they love because even the clients in Newcastle now are going, can I do the virtual one? I'm like, well, yeah, you can do the virtual one because then they can record. They really like the idea of recording the meetings. Yeah, yeah. They want to be able to watch it back and I I don't think we value that. Mm. So um, being able to record the meeting, they can watch it back if they didn't understand something, you know, is really valuable. Mm. They don't have to worry about parking. They don't have to worry about, you know, um, the kids. Yeah, travel. travel, It's it's easy. So, yeah, the virtual meetings is something that even the people that live in Newcastle are now doing. Yeah, Yeah. well, I record all my meetings and I think think part of that is because – the human ability to remember things. We think we're much better than we are, which is bad because we'll have confidence and fuck it up. <laughs> um, but that it don't, we can only remember three or four things yeah. you know, over you know a meeting, and it, it's not necessarily not capturing the essence. Yes. Do you give um, it back to the client as well? Or? It's it's there. It's 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 happily okay. there for them to use. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's more it's more for me. So if I've got you know four four three four meetings in a day, and I'm you know, mixing between different strategies. I certainly don't want to blur lines. Mm. Uh, and I need that confidence that I can just turn it on and, and capture the essence, yep. you know, because often if you're in a conversation, I don't want to have my head into a, totally. a thing. Um, but Adele, I did I did want to sort of give you an opportunity because you, you, before again, you, you were talking about, you know, what your, you know, that, that flexibility and, and, and certainly talking to the, the, the professional women and, and, and the, the struggles that they, they have as, as they have children. Um, but I, I thought, you know, appropriate to, to sort of, give you a chance to talk through how you know your flexible working arrangements and and you know how that talks to talk to that that particular demographic yeah so for me um i've had this issue with how do i how am i going to scale this and so for me one way we're going to be able to scale that is by using uh, people virtually which means that we can have people all over australia helping people it just so happens a lot of people that want that virtual role are females uh, what i love about this is that they're going to be able to keep in the industry and and so, you know, previously, if someone has a baby, you know, they could have some time out of the workforce and then it's really hard for them to get back in. It's even harder if they're in the financial planning industry because all the rules have changed and mm. technology is different. So any time away when you've got kids, you know, can be really difficult. And now with all the education standards are changing, people don't want to let their authorities lapse. And so this is a great way to try and have some balance. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about how it's working mm. and, and to really, you know, um, be able to help, you know, women all over Australia keep in the advice space and then also help you know train people that you know, maybe start in the admin EA role which is how I started um, and get them to be you know if they want to show them the path about how they can be an advisor. May I um, just ask you to talk about the uh, authority lapsing and, and what that means? Yeah so if you if your authority lapses now let's just pick on um, you know my current um, M if her authority lapses 
it's hard for her to get back in. With the education standards change, you've had to have held your proper authority. So if she didn't have the, mm. you know, CFP and stuff before and now that she's out of the authority, she's going to have to, like, it, it's just going to be harder for her to get back in. So if mm. someone's got their proper authority now, she'd keep it um, because it, it could be harder to get back with all the rule changes that are happening. And so, yeah, that's what happened. She, you know, she let hers lapse. And so now we're going through the process, a lot of paperwork and a process to try and, mm. um, you know, get it back. All oh, right, so AR status, not authority in no, the industry. No, no, AR, sorry. Yeah, let's be clear. Sorry, be clear. <laughs> AR, but also both. Are, yeah, are yeah. Both, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so with your, just going back to the saving squad, yeah. how do you find people, like, in terms of their ability to, to get into conversations and put it out there? Because I, I feel like some people are a little bit hesitant to talk about, you know, what they do with their finances. But mm. do you, do you, what are you, yeah, what's yeah, your so experience? Yeah, so to start with, um, definitely start, it takes a while. So, but I'm really good at community. Um, I don't know why and how, I'm just good at community. And so, you know, we'll do stuff like giveaways. So when a uh, tight-ass Tuesday once a month, we'll pick a winner and they'll get a shirt. So those people are like a Saving Squad T-shirt. Those people are then, you know, coming back and thanking and they're more engaged and they invite other people. So it sort of has that knock-on effect. Um, but to start with, when I very first started, I put the very first tight-ass Tuesday um, post up and I had a bit of a panic attack that no one was going to comment. So I, like, sent messages to, like, five of my friends and family. Can you please go? that comment and then like five seconds later I'm looking and I'm like there's like 10 comments and none of them are then and so sometimes it does um, you know you have that little bit of self doubt is this going to work and also um, you know if someone hasn't commented for a while you know I, I've private messaged people I said oh, hey I haven't seen you in there for a little while just want to check you're alright and you know sometimes I might say well I've actually had blah happen or um, but that, that's just how, how I build that community but yeah there's definitely time you start them so is anyone even going to listen to this book club am I just talking to myself like <laughs> yeah. um and it wasn't until it's was just a very funny story so when I first did it I thought no one's even listening no one even is even listening and then I was at an event in Sydney and I was with my um, dear friend Monica and in the halftime break we we're chatting to one of her friends and oh this is Adele blah, nice to meet you and the lady goes about 30 seconds later she goes are you Adele Martin and I was like um yeah oh my god I love you. And I was like, <laughs> she goes, I don't know what to say. I'm like starstruck. <laughs> and, and my friend had absolutely pissed herself, could, was on the floor laughing. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is so awkward. I don't know what to say. Um, and she had never ever. She just said nothing and made yeah. her feel really awkward. Yeah. You're, you're supposed to be so Oh, this happens all the time. Uh, <laughs> you're embarrassing yourself. Um, <laughs> and she'd never commented on a post. I didn't know her in the wow. group. Wow. Yeah. So, um, we make that impact even if we think we aren't. Well, it's a bit like with the XY advisor group. Mm. The amount of people that don't comment, but when you see them walking around doing whatever and you, they come up to you and they go, love the group, man. Yeah. And they wouldn't have said anything, but they're mm. just reading everything, all the great tips that Adele puts on there. and. Yeah. <laughs> It's all the lurkers. You've got lurkers. They don't, don't comment, but they're there. Yeah. And mm. so, um, yeah, so I really – and I'm also really thankful when someone else invites someone else to the group. So I'll say thank you so much to um, – you know, that's the other way I've grown the group is people mention me in other groups. So I got like 20 doctor's requests in a day. And I'm like, what the hell's happened? Um, someone's mentioned me in a medical mum's Facebook group. And uh, so wow. – And so – or there's a group called Like-Minded Bitches Drinking Wine – <laughs> often, I, often I'll get mentioned in that group and I get a whole group of people from that group come in. Yeah. So being mentioned in other yeah. groups definitely uh -huh. helps with your, you know, to get your um, group up as well. But the, yeah. the engagement just starts slowly, naturally, you know, making sure – I'm a massive fan of Gary Vee. His book, Jab, Jab, Right Hook, love that book. He talks about how to build that community. So I'm making sure I'm engaging with people in there. I'm, you know, commenting. I'm, I'm liking. I'm, I'm saying thank you so much for sharing. I am constantly in there liking and commenting and saying, you know, thank you so much for that. Um, and the other thing I'd say about the saving squad, even if I, you know, won the lotto tomorrow, I would still do the saving squad. Um, I just, I love it. I love being in there. I love helping people. I love, you know, the feedback that we get from people that even haven't become a paid client, sending me like amazing messages about the impact that that has made. They're now mm. more conscious. They've now brought their lunch to, to work. They're, and <laughs> and now they don't have a, a credit card. Their holiday didn't go on the credit card. They've got a holiday account. And, yeah. you know, now their partner is doing the same stuff. It's had that knock-on effect to the rest of the family. And um, for me, that's what it's about. It's about making an impact. And so, yeah, and that's why I think, you know, the Saving Squad works because it's something that I would do even if I didn't, you know, make money from it. Yeah. 
And and how do you? Because you screen people, so for for all the guys listening, yeah, I was ask advisors about, listening, don't, don't join. Don't don't worry about trying to get in. Uh, Adele is ruthless. Is Create not a fake for financial Facebook plans. account. <laughs> um, but yeah, like so, how? What's the process, and how do you screen people, and yeah. how do you welcome people? Do they yeah. end up on a mailing list? And, no, and so well? yeah. um, we direct people. Now, when I first started, I wasn't getting email addresses. So part of the stuff when we went to FinCon was the importance of getting email addresses mm. and, and that nurture. So they now opt in via the website. So via delmartin.com everywhere my, my opt-in everywhere is a saving squad and so they actually go in that way and then they get a request to join the saving squad so um, and then I approve it. So we make sure that we've got the email address, but then I check to make sure this is something for other advisors starting in the group. You want to have it as a community of actual people that you can help. You don't want other advisors in there because for starters, you don't know if they're going to poach them, if they're going to message them offline. So you have to watch mm. that. But also you just, it's not the point of the group. The point of the group is, you know, if I had every advisor that I had requested, I would have, you know, 2,000 people in there. Mm. Um, but I don't want half of them to be advisors. It defeats the purpose of the group. Protect the safe space that yeah. is the group. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, so what part of what we do is a screening process where, you know, we're checking things like LinkedIn, we're checking, we're Googling so we can see where they're coming from. We ask them when they heard about us, all sorts of stuff like that. We're actually messaging them that um, so we can see if they're an advisor. And if they're, if they're not, if they are a financial advisor, what I do is say, you know, thank you so much for the interest. Um, however, you know, you might like to try check out the XY advisor group or you might like to ch- check out, you know, the group that I've created, Marketing for Financial Advisors. These are some other groups that are more appropriate for you or you might like this podcast so I really you know give them some other tips that they can then take away if they are an advisor and um but yeah and they're usually totally cool with that and, and you know appreciative at the moment it has is me doing the screening but we are now systemizing it so that it can be something that ASA takes on so I've got um documenting the process and yeah every single person that joins gets a private message so saying you know welcome to the saving squad and this is what they get and so yeah they get a private message which is good because that means I've connected to them on messenger which means I can re-message can you, them can you slow down we're mm-hmm. just taking notes for a <laughs> So, I talk quick. No, we're I just taking really notes for quick. XY advisor. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. I said before, you were just a bad I was looking at me going, um, should we be doing this? Uh, <laughs> it's so you impressive. You mean I should check my Facebook? Is that... Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. I see. I but see. But the other thing with the Facebook group, it's not just new clients. This just dawned on me after... Because I know some of the people listening have got you know, much more you know established businesses and maybe they're not looking to grow really quickly. Um, so for those people, it's a great way to get in contact with and keep in contact with your current clients. So it wasn't something that I realized until I had, you know, a client say to me, are we allowed to join? I'm like, are you allowed to join? Um, yeah. And then it, it didn't occur to me that I hadn't even invited my current clients. Mm-hmm. So I then, which was a big eye opener, I then invited them. And now it's so easy for them to tag tag people in the post because then my clients already love me. They've just had a meeting, you know, and it's also just a way for me to keep them to contact with them, to keep relevant between meetings. Mm-hmm. And so that has been massive. And that's why I would encourage other advisors to start their own groups or other officers to start their own groups because it lets you keep in contact with your current clients. Mm-hmm. Any dealer group issues? Sorry to ask the, no. the question. I haven't had any issues. Um, my dealer group is... i got no idea what she's doing. Yeah. They're, <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, they're very supportive of it. So the only thing that I'm not allowed to do, which no one's allowed to do, is you know mention a product. But we have... Well, the, the beauty is you just don't let them in. They don't know yeah, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but they've been very supportive of me. So Good. my, my um, dealer group is RI Advice, so, um, you know, ANZ, and they're very supportive of what I'm doing in the cash flow space uh, and, you know, really in that advice space, you know, um, that social media space because you know, they, they want to know how to how to do it. So no, they've been very supportive and of me doing that sort of stuff. Awesome, that's great. Nice to hear. Yeah. So I think like if anyone's out there going, shit, she's got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Well, there's more opportunities coming up. We've got the X Y Advisor event on the twenty first, twenty second, twenty second, twenty second of Feb. Emily's going to have to be on the <laughs> on the <laughs> podcast just jumping in. It's actually the twenty second of March. And um, Feb. Um, Feb. Feb. Yep. Cool. Twenty <laughs> second of February. We've got the event. <laughs> we think we're pretty sure. Check the website. Always safest to check the website. <laughs> so uh, just um, around the end of the month, just rock up at the art house, uh, whether it's February, March, or April, and we should have something going on there. <laughs> Hopefully, Adele will be there. <laughs> but no, that's shaping up good. We've got yeah, uh, power, some power women on the yeah. lineup. Uh, yeah, Catherine and uh, Jess Brady. Yeah, oh, there'll be. Uh, yeah, there's, there's some good different elements. Like, obviously, um, you can rock up and just ask Adele questions about Facebook groups and mm. social media and stuff like that. And she's got more than that. That's not even, like, <laughs> that's even an 
That's the tip of the iceberg. We didn't even talk about the podcast. We might have to save that for the event. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Adele, thank you very much for joining us. Um, tell us uh, if someone wants to sort of reach out or, or get in touch, what's the, what's the best way? So if they're wanting more of those marketing ideas, I've got the Facebook group uh, Marketing for Financial Advisors. So heads up, that's just for financial advisors. I don't want people in there that are trying to um, you know, harass them into different lead generation stuff. It's just for people that want to share marketing ideas. So people that really have that um, open element that aren't scarce, they don't have that scarcity. So they're open to sharing their marketing ideas. And I'm loving that group. So if you want to jump in there, see what people are doing that, you know, we've got some really cool people in there doing some cutting edge stuff in terms of marketing. We've got that group. I wouldn't um, really call James Millard cutting edge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you should, because uh, he's going to be emceeing the event. So. Oh, okay. right. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah, it's, it's really cool some of the stuff that they're doing in there and sharing. Um, yeah, I love seeing everyone's wins. And then the other way that um, I'm also be able to help as well, if you've got a dealer group or if you've got, um, you know, your, your um, office event, uh, I do have, you know, a workshop that I do around the social media stuff and also around the, you know, how do you scale and automate. So I've got those two workshops. Um, I also have the keynote as well, how for enemies and failures. So, yeah, if you're thinking, oh, I like what she's saying, I want to get more of it, that's another way that I, um, I can also add some value and how can people get in touch um just facebook message me or um adele all about the messenger yeah all like about the messenger it. or at adele at adelemartin.com is the other way that people can reach out um and you can get that or you can also contact me on the website um it's adelemartin.com so adelemartin.com you can um, go through to contact there um or facebook message snapchat instagram or however you want to do it carry a pigeon all the all the places yeah. so just so, you know all the pipes figure it yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much, Adele. You're and welcome. look forward to uh, the event in Sydney very, very soon. Yes. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. so much for your time. Yeah, Appreciate cheers. it. Thanks.